Hi, welcome to Bright Hope Creations. I'm Kara and today we are coloring a critter with Copics and Kara, that's the series. <laughs> All right, this is the second in the series and this is William from Purple Onion Designs. And this was illustrated by Stacy Yakula and we're starting off with William just giving him kind of laying out where I want those shadows and coming back in with a little bit darker but it's still pretty light this is an E40 I'll be combining E's and cool grays and warm grays but it, it'll be an interesting one because I'm really focusing on neutrals today so those browns and grays and kind of going along with what we have for the background there. So the background is also illustrated by Stacy Yakula for Purple Onion Designs, and that is the bakery background. And the bakery has some Christmas or snow elements to it, the background does, so I just made sure not to stamp those areas. I think pretty much just snow on the roof was the deal there, but I decided not to go with a winter theme today. Well, as you can see, I just keep finding those same shadows going up in the darkness of the color, so up in number. Now I'm at E47, that's as dark as I go. And then I'll start descending and bringing the blending out towards the areas that are lighter. Just defining those very dark areas with a, just a tap or a touch at, at some points. All right, coming in now with that E44, and as you can see, bringing it out a little bit. Now, William is just a bird. I mean, that's what he's described as on the website for Purple Onion Designs. And so he could be any bird. And today, I decided he would be a sparrow. So I'm keeping him neutral, like the background, but he's going to stand out because he's just going to be darker more prominent and also I stamped him darker as well. So he's stamped with a Copic friendly black ink. I think this is Lawn Fawn's jet black ink. And the background was stamped with a a light hand. It was it was black ink, but it was second generation stamp to keep it lighter. And I'm alternating with the E40s and the Ws. I do that quite often with a bird like this, an owl, or the brown areas of a robin. The E40s are kind of a gray-brown and work really well with these warm grays. So they blend nice together and give a variation in the feathers. It kind of gives it more texture that way. Even in these small areas, I still will work to get that texture to show up. One thing I want to point out here is at the eyes, I usually try to darken the areas around them and upward. So it looks like they're a little bit back further from the cheek area. It brings the cheeks forward and gives them a little bit more depth to those eyes. And in this case, it, it doesn't have to be much, just a little bit to define that area. Now I'm coming back in after I've blended things out and adding some of the darkest brown. After things were blended away, it's nice to come back and redefine those. And then I am blending it out, but not as much as I did the first time. I don't really need to. Just make sure that I don't have any harsh lines. And I'm using an E42 to do that. I... Uh, skipped the E44 uh, because I just didn't need to have that real gradual blending. It's already been done that way. Adding a little bit to his chest, some feathers there, and coming in to just to find some of those little details on his feathers. And then I'm moving on along, moving along to his little paper bag and his walking stick. And I'm using E20s for this. And I'll use straight E20s, just an E21 and E23 to shade his uh, paper bag and stick. So you can see the difference between the E40s 
and the E20s. Uh, it's quite a contrast here. But now I'll come in with the E50s for that loaf of bread. I don't see quite as large a contrast between the E20s and the E50s. However, these E50s are kind of a yellower brown and the E20s, I feel, are a little redder. Now the E-teens are redder still. And I could be off on that. That's just the way I see them. Uh, but just going to keep giving that some shadow and moving on to that little bottle of wine. <laughs> just putting a little B60 in there and an RV69 for a nice red wine. And after I had that B60, I will add a little bit of warm gray just to make sure that it looks like you can see behind that bottle. Oh, no, E40. To see behind the bottle that he is back there. <laughs> a little Y26 for his beak and onto his cap. I was thinking he would have like a green tweed cap, but again, I wanted to stay in the neutral, so I'm using the E80s. It's kind of a greenish brown, and so I used the E81, and now the 84, I'm kind of adding in a little kind of tweed look, but I'm not really sold on how this pattern is working out for him, so I'm going to blend that in with the E81, and then start over. Because now I, now I feel like I know what I want to do with that pattern. And so with the E87, I'm getting that pattern a little bit more defined. Kind of that tweed plaid type look. My dad wore a hat like this when I was growing up. And I looked it up on Amazon to see what kind of cap this was called. I looked up French chapeau <laughs> just to see what would come up. And the description said... Flat newsboy hat. And it also said, same thing. It said, wool blend Gatsby cabbie cap. So so which is it? I don't know. Probably a lot of different names for this cap. And maybe you even know of a different one. But it looks like it's still in style today. So I'm going to consider my dad stylish <laughs> in this way anyway. Oh, I miss that man. Oh, all right. So here we are. I've got that tweed look going and I'm just going to keep coming back and forth with the different shades of the E80s and blend it together. Make sure that that tweed looks like it's subtle instead of a distinct plaid. So blending that together and then shading the areas that would be darker in the shadows. And as I look at that background, I feel like I accomplished that look of staying in the neutrals, but letting the bird be more prominent and standing out from the background. All right, a little white gel pen. I have a working white gel pen. That's not always the case, but putting some details on those feathers and on his chest. And the nice thing about a white gel pen is that it gives a little texture too. So there's just a, a little added bonus there. All right, I'm going to fussy cut him out, but I'm chopping off his legs. Oh, no, <laughs> I'll stamp that onto the card base so that I didn't have to cut out those little legs those skinny little legs and make them look right. All right, a little detail with my white gel pen in the hat. And sometimes I can wipe off some of that so it's not so bright. And here I just wanted to make sure it was covered up a little bit. So I used my E47. Now I put it into the Misty to stamp William onto that background. I use a piece of acetate in the corner so that I'll stamp it out on that first, see if it's positioned the way I want it, position it where I like it, and then you can see it's much different. But once I have that exactly where I want it, I can stamp that down. I put a little extra emphasis on those legs because that's really what I want there. And I'll glue William onto the background. And there he is, his little legs 
look like they were there all along. <laughs> Using a C2 to begin those shadows, just trying to figure out where they are, and then darken them up with the C3. And so it's really dark where the areas that touch the ground are. And then I use a C2 and I'll use a C1 to make lighter shadow for where his body would cast the shadow onto the street. And there he is, William by the bakery, ready to have a little bread and wine. I wonder if he's going to the cheese shop next. <laughs> well, I hope you enjoyed this episode of Coloring a Critter with Copics and Kara. Thanks for watching and have a great day. Bye!